such a long dress, Mother. Well, it's your 14th birthday. If I had known you'd make my dress so long, I wouldn't have wanted to be 14. This dress is not too long, Benda. What do you want me to do? Can I help it if my baby grows two inches taller every spring? Now that you're a grown-up girl, you can't go out in a pedophore. At least my pedophore looks better on me than that bathrobe. Please, let me keep wearing it. Just for the summer. Let's put it away till my next birthday. I'll only be stepping on the hem and tearing it. I don't know what to say to you. I'd love to keep you just the way you are, baby. Other girls your age are skinny and gawky. You're the opposite. Who knows what you'll be like when the others are fully developed? Who knows? Maybe I won't be around anymore. Maybe. Baby, where do you get such ideas? Don't, Mommy, don't be sad. Oh, my dearest darling. I get them at night when I can't fall asleep. I don't feel sad at all. I know I'll sleep all the better then. Mother, is it sinful to think about things like that? Go and hang that sackcloth in the closet. Put your pinafore back on, for heaven's sake. When I get a chance, I'll sew a ruffle on the bottom. No! In that case, I'd rather go ahead and be 20. Just as long as you don't get too cold. This little skirt used to be plenty long for Now, you. when it's almost summer. A person doesn't get cold at my age. Your legs least of all. Would it be better if I got too hot, Mother? When I wear my sackcloth, I am going to be dressed like a fairy queen underneath. <gasps> no, don't be angry, Mommy. Nobody will ever know it, then. So what are we doing in this world, anyway? What do we go to school for? We can go to school so they can give us exams. And what do they give us exams for? So we can flunk. Seven of us have to flunk, if only because the upstairs classroom doesn't hold more than 60. I swear to God, if it wasn't for my dad, I'd pack a bag tonight. Here, let's talk about something else. It's getting so pitch dark out, you can barely see the hand in front of your face. Don't you agree, Melchior? that a human being's sense of shame is merely a product of his own upbringing. No matter what, it must be deeply rooted in human nature. I mean, imagine you were supposed to take off all your clothes in front of your best friend. You wouldn't do it unless he was doing it himself at the same time. Though I guess it's more or less a fashion thing. I've been thinking. When I have children, little boys and little girls, I'm going to start them off sleeping in the same room. Possible in the very same bed and have them help each other get dressed and undressed in the mornings and evenings. If they grow up like this, then later on they're bound to be more relaxed than we are, just as a rule. <laughs> That's definitely my opinion. The only question is, what happens when the girls start having babies? What do you mean, having babies? Well, in this regard, I believe in certain instincts. For example, if you were to take a male cat and a female cat, lock them up together, and keep them isolated while they were still young. Sooner or later, the female cat would get pregnant, even though neither she nor the male had anyone whose example they could follow. I guess with animals it just sort of happens. All the more so with people is what I think. Listen, Moritz, if your boys are sleeping in the very same bed with the girls, and all of a sudden they start to feel their first masculine stirrings, I'll bet you anything. You may be right about that, still. I'd be exactly the same with the girls when they reach the proper age. Not that a girl is quite, there's obviously no telling exactly what would, still, it's reasonable to assume. And you can count on curiosity to play its part as well. <laughs> One question though, Melchior? Yeah? Are you sure you'll answer? Of course. Promise? Cross my heart. Yes, Mortz? Have you done the essay yet? <laughs> Come on. Nobody can hear us. Nobody can even see us. Have you already been feeling them? What? How did you put it? Oh, masculine stirrings? Mm-hmm. Sure have. <laughs> me too. <laughs> it struck me like a bolt of lightning. <laughs> You've been dreaming? But only very briefly, about some legs in turquoise tights that were, I guess it's more accurate to say that I thought they were trying to climb over the podium at school. It was only for a moment, though. George Gershnitz dreamed about his mother. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
he told you that. Yeah, over on Gallows Hill. <laughs> He'd only known what I'd suffered since that night. Pangs of guilt? <laughs> Pangs of guilt. Fear of death. Good lord. I thought I was suffering from some, some kind of internal injury. <laughs> <sighs> the only thing that finally calmed me down is when I started journaling. The last three weeks were a Gethsemane for me. I was more or less prepared for it. I felt a little ashamed, but that was all. And you're almost four years older than me. That more it's I wouldn't worry about. There's no set age limit for the appearance of these phantoms. You know that big Lamermeyer kid? He's a full three years younger than me, and according to Hansi Rilla, he still doesn't dream about anything but apricot jelly and sponge cake. <laughs> How did Hansi Rilla know a thing like that? He asked him. I wouldn't dare ask anybody. You asked me. God, you're right. I don't ever remember longing for this kind of emotional turmoil. Why couldn't they have just let me sleep in peace until everything was quiet again? My parents could have a hundred better children than me. Have you ever wondered, Melchior, how we actually land in, the, in this world? You mean you don't know, Mortz? How can I be expected to know? There's hardly a girl at school I can even look at without thinking something abominable. And I swear to you, I don't know what. I'll tell you all about it. I've gotten some of it from books, some from my observations of nature, and some from illustrations. You'd be surprised. It immediately made an atheist of me. <laughs> <laughs> I went through Myers Abridged from A to Z. Not a single straightforward answer. I mean, what's the point of an encyclopedia that doesn't answer the most obvious question about life? Just come back to my room with me. Mama will make us some lemonade, and we can have a nice, cozy talk about reproduction. <laughs> I can't. I can't have a nice, cozy talk about reproduction. <laughs> you want to do me a favor, give me your information in writing. Write down everything you know and make it as clear and concise as possible. And I'll have no choice but to look through it with a weary eye. And if absolutely necessary, you might add a couple of illustrations. <laughs> <laughs> You're like a girl. <laughs> Anything you say, though. It's the only subject that completely interests me. <laughs> <coughs> One question, though, Moritz. Mm -hmm. Have you... Have you ever seen a girl? Yeah. No. Completely, though. Totally. So have I. <laughs> Illustrations won't be necessary, then. <laughs> You go, uh, you're leaving already? I have homework. Good night, Malkyor. Sleep well. Life is a matter of taste. Do something? Ilsa? <laughs> what are you doing out here? Why did you scare me like that? What are you looking for? Did you lose something? What did you scare me so horribly for? I was in the city. I'm on my way home. I don't know what I lost. No point in looking for it then. Damn it. Damn it! Damn it. Damn it! I haven't been home for four days. Quiet as a cat. Quiet as a cat. Because I'm wearing my dancing slippers. My mother's going to faint. Where Come have you been kicking around this time? At the Priapus Club. <laughs> the Priapus Club? At Knoll's, at Ferendorf's, Ranks, Spuler's, all kinds of places. <laughs> ring, 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 she's ready for anything. Do they paint you? Ferendorf's painting me as a stylite. I stand on a Corinthian column. <laughs> but Ferendorf, let me tell you, is a first class crackpot. I squished one of his tubes last time and he wipes his brush in my hair. I smack him in the ear and he throws his palette at my head. I knock over his easel and he comes after me with his palette knife and we go charging over the tables and chairs and around and around the studio. There was a sketch behind the stove. 
be a good boy, I'll tear it up. He promised me amnesty and ended up attacking me. I'm telling you, attacking me with kisses. Where do you sleep at night when you're in the city? Yesterday I was at Knoll's. The day before that at Bajakowitz's and on Sunday at Okinomopolis's. There was champagne at Podinsky's. I was so drunk they had to put me to bed. You're still in school, Moritz? No, leaving this quarter. That's right. <coughs> Remember how we used to play robbers? Venla Bergman and you and me and the others. And after dinner, we used to have warm goat's milk at my house. What's Venla doing? I haven't seen her since the flood. What's Milky Gabor doing? Does he still give you those profound looks? We used to stand across from each other in chorus. He's a philosopher. Fenla was at my house not too long ago, and she brought my mother some jam. Do you have a hangover? From last night. <laughs> I came staggering home at five in the morning. I can tell just by looking at you, Moritz. I don't know what a hangover is. <laughs> During carnival last year, I spent three days and three nights without <coughs> getting into a bed or out of my clothes. From the ballroom to the cafe, lunch at the Bella Vista, tingle tangle later on in the ballroom at night. Lena was with me, and Viola. And on the third night, Heinrich found me. He was looking for you? He tripped over my arm. I was passed out on a pile of snow. After that, I went over to his place. I didn't leave his apartment for 14 days. What a ghastly time. Every morning I had to wrap myself up in his Persian robe and every night I had to walk around the apartment in a black page boy costume. <coughs> white lace cuffs and a white lace collar. First thing in the morning, he'd get into bed with a pistol load it up with bullets and stick it in my chest. One blink and I'll pull the trigger. He would have done it, Moritz. He would have done it. Then he'd stick the thing in his mouth like a blowpipe. He says it arouses your self-preservatory instincts. Then burr. The bullet would have gone straight through my spine. Is he still alive? What do I know? There was a mirror set into the ceiling above the bed. The room was just a closet, but it felt as tall as a tower and as bright as an opera house. I had horrible dreams at night. God, oh God, I couldn't wait for it to be light again. <coughs> Good night, Elsa. When you sleep, you look so pretty I could kill you. Is this Heinrich still alive? I hope not. I have to go back, Elsa. Come into our house with me. What for? To have 
have some warm milk. I have a curling iron for your hair, and I can hang a little bell around your neck. We still have a rocking horse you can play with. I have to go back. Good night, Elsa. Sweet dreams. Do you still go down to the wigwam where Melky Gabor buried my tomahawk? I'm going to be on the trash heaps by the time you guys are ready. One word is all it would have taken. Ilsa! Ilsa! <laughs> she can't hear me, thank God. Takes a clear head and a light heart for that. What a shame to miss the opportunity. I'll scream! I'll scream! To be you, Ilsa! The Priapus Club! Unconsciousness! It takes my strength away! Here in the bushes of the riverbank. Here I found it again without even looking for it. Grassy bank. Tales have grown since yesterday. The view through the willows is still the same. The river's as slow as molten lead. Before I forget. Sparks are so wild. Up, down, this way, that way. Souls. Shooting stars. Before I started the fire, you could still see the grass and a line of light on the horizon. It's gotten dark. Now I won't be going home. I work too hard. Let's not be sad. <laughs> Life's too short. <laughs> you see him hanging there. But you're worn out. And tomorrow they'll be crushed. Being tired's almost as unbearable as being hungry. <laughs> <sighs> I'm worn out. I can't summon the strength for it. 
No sooner have you made your decision when, lo and behold, your vanished strength comes surging back again. On the evening bells and the flaming firmament. It's never going to get much better than this. So sometimes I can already see myself as Reverend Rubble, an affectionate little housewife, an extensive library, rights and privileges in every circle of society. You get six days to think, and on the seventh, you open your mouth. When you go out for a walk, schoolboys and schoolgirls run up and shake hands with you. And when you get home, the coffee is steaming and the cake is on the table, and, and girls are bringing in apples to the garden gate. Can you imagine anything nicer? I imagine half-closed eyelashes, half-open lips, and Turkish draperies. I don't believe in grand emotions. Look, the reason our parents wear long faces is to hide their stupid thoughts. When they're by themselves, they call each other blockheads just like we do. I know they do. When I'm a millionaire, I'm going to build a monument to God. Think of the future as a bowl of fresh milk with sugar and cinnamon. One man spills and cries, and the other churns it and sweats. Why don't we skim the cream off? Don't you think we could learn how? We'll skim the cream off. And let the chickens eat the rest. I've slipped out of plenty of nooses already. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Are you at it again already? Well, one of us has to start. Maybe when we look back on a day like this 30 years from now, this will seem indescribably nice. And now it's happening without, without any effort at all. Why shouldn't it? If a person happened to be by himself, he might even cry. Let's not be sad. When I left the house this morning, I was only thinking I'd talk to you and go right back. I was expecting you. Virtue's not a bad thing to wear, but it's cut for a big man. We're still tripping on the cuffs. I never would have calmed down if I hadn't run into you. I love you, Hansi, like I've never loved another soul. Let's not be sad. Maybe when we look back on a day like this 30 years from now, this will all seem ridiculous. But now, it's all so nice. The mountains are glowing, the grapes are hanging in our mouths, and the evening wind is stroking the cliffs like a little teasing kitten. You promise to tell me when I'm old. Don't want to know what it's like to be all alone. I'd rather get lost in the woods behind our home. Oh. So come with me, we'll play in the falling leaves. You can't trust in the spirits inside these trees. But we may never find a place peaceful as this. We may never believe that where we are is where we're meant to be. But 
now I see. Glad you're standing next to me. 